For this video, we're going to go over how to make the cow catcher for the miniature train project. So in most of the parts that we make, I tell you you can make it however you want in whatever order. For this one, there's a certain order you need to do things in or else it's um, not going to display everything the way that you want it to or else you're going to have to do extra modifications to it. So the first thing we're going to do is actually draw this very bottom piece and then we're going to use the loft tool to kind of stretch it up to this part. So we're going to have to make the very bottom and then we're going to make another sketch and then make the top and then loft the two together. So for this one we're going to do this on the X Z plane and I'm going to rotate this and we're going to use our line tool and for right now I'm just going to kind of make the basic shape and then we're going to add in our dimensions okay and then I can use the trim tool to trim that off so for this dimension let's see that's one right there so we have 1.8 and for right here it's a quarter inch and it's the same for this side and for this dimension let's see the way they'd have placed it um, if it was from here it'd be one inch to there but the way they placed it in 0.75 and then we want from here to here alright this it's hard to see exactly where it is but it's half of this dimension and I'm going to show you a nice trick we can click on this one so it's referencing that dimension and then we can divide by two and now what we want to do is use this tool so the coincidence constraint we're going to click on the green dot on this line so what that is is the center point of that line and we're going to connect it to there so that one step is super important because you want to make sure that your second sketch is directly above this sketch and if you don't have that adding in these little cutout windows won't happen because um, there will be a slight curve to the surface to you it'll look flat but to the program it knows there's a slight curve and it won't let you put a sketch on there later on so now we're going to finish this sketch and we're going to use plane and we need to open up this folder let's see the XZ plane and you need to drag this up and for this one this dimension because we want it the full height of our part 0.75 Alright, give me a starter sketch. And remember with your plane, if you click on it, you click through it, you click on the edge, you click on it. So for this one, I'm going to rotate it again. So again, I'm going to just place this off to the side, make our basic shape. So remember, it doesn't have to be 100% perfect. We're going to add in all the dimensions. So our dimension from here to here is 1.2. And again, for our edges, it's going to be actually the same dimension as before, quarter inch for both of these. And let's see, from here to here, it's 0.75. You can find that dimension right there. So this one, it's you're going to have to move this around a lot to figure out where your dimensions are. It's a little bit more difficult than the other parts. And again, this one's half of this length. Okay. Again, we need to lock the center of that into that yellow dot right there. So our origin. So both of these, the way that they look, they're right on top of each other. If I finish my sketch, you can see that they're right above each other. One just looks like a smaller version of the other one. Now we can use the hold tool or not the whole tool, uh, the loft tool, so it's underneath the sweep tool. So this one's a little tricky. Um, you can click on either the sketch over here or the edge of it. So because there's only one um, shape, it automatically selects it. And then to select our next sketch, 
click to add, select our next sketch, and you can see it automatically brings it up. Then we can click OK. All right, right now we have this work plane that we don't need anymore. So what we could do is right click and uncheck the visibility. If you delete it, it actually deletes the sketch that you had um, referencing it. So you want to make sure that you don't delete it. You just want to make it invisible. So the next thing we're going to do is the shell tool. So for this one right now, it hollowed out the inside, but we need to tell it that we want an opening. So we want the opening on the very bottom. So you click it, it opens it up. And our thickness for that is 0.1. And that happens to be the default. So click OK. Our next thing is we're going to add in those two windows. So what we can do is we can start our sketch right here. And if your, if your part won't let you start a sketch right there, that means that you had an issue with your loft. So you're going to have to go back and check your two sketches, make sure everything's lined up. And if you need to check your two sketches, you can just click the plus sign next to the loft tool. Click into the sketches, see if everything's lined up nicely. If it's not, line it up, and then you should be able to add in um, your sketch on this side. So next thing we're going to do, project geometry. And we can see that this is the same dimension all the way around. So we can actually use another tool, which is the offset. You can click on projected geometry. Make sure you don't click that line. You just want it off to the side. And right here, you can type in the dimension, or you can add it in later on. I'm just going to add it in now. And we can see that there's our point one. All the edges are exactly the same. So we can finish. We can extrude. We want to select that little window. We want it to be cut in. And it needs to be, let's see, the thickness of the piece that's remaining should be 0 0.05. And our entire thickness right now is 0.1. So 0 0.05. All right, and we need to do the same thing to the other side. So that is the front of it. It's all set. So now we need to work on the back. So we're going to start a sketch on the back. And I'm going to put in three circles. Right now I'm just trying to make sure that I don't click on any of the lines that pop up over here. Just because I want to make sure that they're not going to be connected to anything. And project geometry just so we have some things to reference off of. Okay, so from here to the very bottom. Okay, so you need to pay attention to, let's see, this one right here. So it is 0.125, and it's actually the same thing for the other one, 0.125. And then if we notice over here, from one of these over to the center of that one, we can see that is 0.5. Okay, so remember this isn't referencing the very bottom edge, it's referencing the center point of this piece right here. So make sure you pay attention to that note. All right, and now everything is actually referenced. Let's see, this one and this one is 0 0.625 from here to here. Again, is let me see. I'll do this the same as that's in the handout. Just to make it a little bit easier to follow. So from here to here, right here, is 1.25. Okay, so right now you can see that these are kind of all over the place. Not where we want them to be. Also, that one's off the edge. So what we want these to be is from here to here. We want these to be in the center again. So we know that the entire distance of this top edge is 1.2. And then we want it in half, so divided by 2. It's lined up. So you can see right now that the center points are all 
blue. So that means that it's locked in place for the location, but right now not the size. So we still need the size of all of these. So our size, oh, there's our number. So 0 0.125, 0 0.125, and we want all of these to be the same. So I'm going to show you another tool. So we can use the equal constraint. So let's make sure that all of our circles are the same size. So you can click on equal, click on our circle that we have dimensioned, click on the next one, and click on the next one, and then click back to one that's dimensioned. So you can see that now all three of these are blue, even though just one of them has the dimension changed. So if I change this to something else, you can see that all of them change at the same amount. Okay, so we can finish. We can extrude. You want to make sure you select all three of these. And our distance is right here. So I have 0.125. And the last thing we need to do for our cow catcher is a chamfer that's underneath the fillet tool. And for this one, we want a distance and an angle. So our angle is 45 degrees, and our distance is 0 0.01. So we click on the face, and then click on the edge. And you can use the plus sign to add in another one. Face, edge, plus, face, edge. We do the check mark to finish. And that is our cow catcher.